What is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to a show where we talk about what the hell just happened in week seven of fantasy football, Kyle. There were a lot of head-scratching moments. There were a lot of injuries this week. Uh, a lot of people just left after a lot of these matchups going, what the fuck did I just witness? Like, what, what the hell is going on right now? Well, the thing that made this wor- week even worse was that we were missing bye weeks. <laughs> We're missing studs, <laughs> yeah. like not studs, studs. <clears throat> yeah, we are missing no Cooper Cup, no Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs. Be- yeah, no Stephon Diggs. I mean, we were missing like legit guys, and then on top of that, now we lost a bunch of guys to injury as well this week. So you were already scraping the bottom of the barrel to yep. put the lineup together, and now we have this. Uh, no. Well, we're not going to waste a whole lot of time. We're going to get right into it. We have timestamps down below if that's what you're into, if that's your type of thing or not. Uh, But Kyle, let's go ahead and kick it off with some studs. Some stud players that dudded in week seven. And right off the bat, we have to talk about Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson has been, I guess you could say, struggling from a Lamar Jackson standpoint here as of late. But then this weekend, 120 yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions, and only 59 yards rushing is just not going to cut it as an elite level quarterback here in fantasy football, especially in a week like we just talked about that had so many things kind of go against players here this year. Yeah. Uh, it was like, it was like this and everyone was like, Oh, the dude did such a great job, you know, not taking the the contract. And now yeah. it's like, it's starting to like starting to plateau a little bit, it's starting to get a little bit worrisome. What about Tom Brady? Also another team, is this like the dark ages in Tampa Bay? What is going on right now? You just almost got shut out to the Carolina Panthers. Who knew, Kyle? Who knew that the problem in Carolina was Robbie Anderson and Christian McCaffrey? I mean, once they get rid of him, apparently they're a better team now. Well, it's Robbie tough. Anderson was a problem. He was a problem. But great. I'm glad that he's in Arizona with my Cardinals now. Uh, but Tom Brady, 290 yards passing. That doesn't look so bad, but no interceptions. And no touchdowns. That's the big one right there. No touchdowns in an offense that has the likes of Leonard Fournette and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And you walk away with no touchdowns? What the hell is going on? What about Dak Prescott? Well, I will say this real quick, too. Real quick on Tom Brady. Okay. Just because someone's going to mention in the comments, Mike Evans did drop an easy touchdown. (laughs) Agreed. I will will give you that 100%. Mike Evans... Now I know he I don't think he was a hundred percent healthy towards the, the second half of that ball game. He was limping around a lot, but he just didn't seem to he seemed frustrated when I was watching that game. And I, I guess when, when you're losing by multiple scores to the Panthers, I guess that's enough to make you frustrated. But yeah. Dak Prescott, at least he was coming back off of injury, had 207 yards and a touchdown, but that was against the Lions. It really didn't get that offense overly going. A lot of the offensive work came from the ground game with Pollard and Zeke. We'll talk about them later. Uh, Jamal Williams, he's listed in the stud category because we knew before this game that we had no Jamal, uh, we had no DeAndre Swift, and that Jamal Williams was going to be the guy. When Jamal Williams has been the guy, he's been a top twelve, top fifteen running back in fantasy football. Guy had fifteen carries for seventy nine yards, but the big thing here had a fumble on the goal line. And that yep. is not that that's like the epitome of old school lions. That's not what you're supposed to be doing right now. That one hurt a lot of people because they were kind of banking on Jamal Williams, especially with all those yep. bye weeks. Yep. Uh, what about Leonard Fournette? I mean, we just talked about the Bucks. I mean, we're probably gonna talk about a lot of Bucks in this segment, if we're being completely honest. Uh, Leonard Fournette, we even like, got together after the game in our in our group chat on Twitter. We're like, did he get like not play the whole game? Did he get hurt? Like, did we miss something with Fournette? Why? Why? Because he only had eight carries for 19 yards and then three targets, two receptions and seven yards in the passing game. Like I said, it was just a bad overall day in Tampa Bay. Leonard Fournette was a huge, huge disappointment. Uh, How about Christian McCaffrey? Now, a lot of people at least knew about this ahead of time, right? At least we knew going into this week. Listen, we're probably not going to get a full workload of Christian McCaffrey, but a lot of people looking at their schedules weeks in advance expected to have Christian McCaffrey this week. Yep. Only had 10 total touches in his first game in San Francisco. Did that catch you by surprise at all, Kyle? I think we kind of expected it to be a watered-down version here, at least in the first week. Yeah, no, that's what I was warning people about, too, like in the live streams. They're like, do I still start Christian McCaffrey? I'm like, you might not have a choice this week, and if you don't, yet we just risk it and we see what happens. Now, I will say this. Christian McCaffrey in this offense is going to be mighty nice. 
Oh yeah. It, it's good. It's going to be mighty nice. I mean, we're, we're going to start seeing like glimpses of CMC and he may not get to that point where he's getting 25 touches a game over the next couple weeks. But as this guy's workload increases in this offense, even though it may take away from some of the other studs in this offense, CMC is going to be a force in San Francisco. What about yeah, CeeDee Lamb? It should help that entire offense, too. 100%. It should totally open things up as well. Uh, CeeDee Lamb. Obviously, if Dak Prescott missed, then CeeDee Lamb more than likely struggled as well. He only had six targets for four catches and 70 yards. Amon Ra, or what do we call him on the, on the live show? Hashtag Doomtar. Maybe Doom this was Tar. Doom from the... <laughs> Kyle, was this Doom from the beginning? I think it was. I think I think oh, we no. jinxed him. So if you don't know what we're talking about, during the live show on Saturday, somebody asked a question in the chat about Amon Ra, but their phone auto-corrected it and it said Doomtar. So mm -hmm. for the rest of the show, we called him Doomtar. And apparently it led to one target for one catch, four receptions, and then leaving the game with a concussion. That's our bad. Actually, whoever's phone auto-corrected owes the entire nation an apology. Right I don't now. remember who it was. If you're out there, we need an apology. An apology exactly. In the, in the chat, in the comments below. How about uh, Chris Godwin? Also, uh, 13 targets. Had I told you coming into the week that Chris Gar Godwin was going to get 13 targets, you would have been pretty pumped, Kyle. I yep. remember telling a lot of people on the live stream, listen, I'm okay with Godwin this week. I really am. The secondary banged up somewhat in Carolina. A lot of attention going the way of Mike Evans. Chris Godwin could feast. And 13 targets is amazing. He turned him into only seven catches for 43 yards. Like, so bad. So bad. So bad. Michael Pittman, another one, nine targets for six catches and 58 yards. Debo, seven targets uh, for five catches and 42 yards. But the big kicker there only had one rushing attempt. Yep. And that's something else we talked about, you know, going forward. Is CMC going to take away some of that? We saw Jeff Wilson Jr. We saw CMC. We didn't see Debo in the backfield no very much. Nope. What about DK Metcalf? Now, this one we're kind of waiting to see. At the time of this recording, we don't have official word just yet. Only one catch for 12 yards before leaving with what looked like could be a major knee injury. When he was carted off, I didn't think it was that bad. Because he literally got on the cart and he looked over at one of his teammates and was like, no, nah, I'm okay. Like, I read the lips. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. I thought he was going to poop again, Kyle. Full disclosure. That's what I even told the doc in the chat. I'm like, I think he's fine. And then we started to see the replays and the clips of what happened. And all of a sudden, the doc was like, no, he's he not fine. And then he was ruled out immediately. That's something to pay attention to. DK Metcalf. Now we have heard more on his injury as we were prepping the video to be released. It sounds like he has a patellar, uh, patellar tendon injury that is not going to need surgery, which is great news. However, still not a whole lot of word on what that's going to mean, what it's going to look like, recovery time, and things like that. So we'll keep an eye on that as well, but wanted to just throw that in here considering we were just talking about DK Metcalf as well. What about yeah. Zach Ertz all the way back on Thursday night football against the Saints? He only had four targets for two catches and 21 yards. That's not what you want from a top five tight end. No. <laughs> but speaking of what you don't want from a top five tight end, what about Mark Andrews? I don't even have a stat line to give you for Mark Andrews because there's Didn't a he whole had two lot of, points. Did he? I don't even know if he had – were they tackles? Because I don't I don't think he had anything. He had nothing. I mean, at the point, I was so frustrated with Mark Andrews, I didn't even look any further. Whatever it is, a big fat nada for Mark Andrews. TJ Hawkinson? Four targets, or excuse me, five targets, four receptions, and 48 yards-ish. Gerald Everett. Now, Gerald Everett, I only put here for this reason. I just expected more from Gerald Everett. Is five catches for 63 a bad day for a tight end right now in fantasy football? No. No, not in these days. But when you don't have Keenan Allen at 100%, I and mean, he wasn't playing a full set of snaps, when you lost Mike Williams... We still didn't get more Gerald Everett in a game in which they were having to throw the ball. I just expected a little bit more, so I put him here in the dud category as well. Yeah, lot, lots of them. A lots ton of, of them. A, a lot of people just going like, I just don't understand like how some of these guys walked away with some of these stat lines, because especially the Godwin one. The Godwin one is just mind-blowing to yeah, me. Yeah, Godwin doesn't make any sense. Pittman was facing the second-worst team against the yep. pass in terms of fantasy points for wide receivers. Ugh. Yeah, the, the, these ones hurt a lot. But let's I'm let's not, head into. I'm not upset. I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed. Well, let's just take that disappointment, Kyle, and, and roll it right into the the section that makes us upset. And it's worth talking about our misses. Now, yeah. here's a few of our bigger misses on the week. A lot of people will comment every. Well, you didn't mention this guy, or you didn't mention this guy. 
we talk over 100 players a week. We don't list every single one of them. We're talking about our biggest hits and biggest misses. So for the misses, I'll start off here, and I'll start with Daniel Jones. Now, I contemplated putting Daniel Jones here because it's like, it's Daniel Jones. But what's weird about Daniel Jones, and I mentioned this in, in past videos over the last few weeks, you just never know what you're going to get. It's peaks and valleys with Daniel Jones. It's top 10 performances. It's bottom 30 performances. Like he, There's just like no consistency in between. We know the passing game is going to struggle. He had 202 yards passing, one touchdown, no interception. From a quarterback standpoint, not very impressive. But he added 107 yards rushing and a touchdown against the Jags defense, which has been playing pretty solid. And that right there is what really put him over the top for people this week. That's I had him as a 16 six. points. Right there. That's yeah, that's 16 points just right there in rushing. Like, that's not even what I'm expecting. How can you expect that every single week? You just can't. Yeah. Uh, what about what about Matt Ryan? Now, Matt Ryan is another one of those guys who I believe coming was, off such a good performance. What in the world? Well, here's what's crazy about Matt Ryan. He'd finished top five at the position two of the last three weeks. Yep. And then all of a sudden he comes in against a team in which he's faced and already dominated against this year. And he threw for 243, one touchdown and two interceptions. Did not look good whatsoever. I mean, up and down roller coaster with Matt Ryan. Yo, Headliner Nation, just talked about Matt Ryan, but wanted to cut in here real quick because as we were prepping this video to release, we found out that... Matt Ryan is going to be benched. Now, a lot of it was, oh, he was just going to be benched, but now it sounds like he's got some sort of a shoulder sprain. But the point is, is that it sounds like Sam Ellinger is going to be the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts the rest of the season. And we'll touch on that in videos later in the week. But wanted to make sure that since we were talking about Matt Ryan in this video, that you saw that we knew that there was an update to that, and we kept you all in the loop as well. Andy Dalton. How horrible did Thursday night football start for Andy Dalton? Dude had two pick sixes. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had, I believe it was three interceptions in the first half. And yeah. everybody's looking at this going, oh, well, Andy Dalton's melting down. All of a sudden, Andy Dalton went into halftime, came back out and showed up as Joe in Montana. Had <laughs> 361 yards passing and four touchdowns. And then also add, added 21 yards rushing. Andy Dalton added 21 yards rushing. Now, I mean, I'm going to take the miss on Andy Dalton for sure. Uh, but if I had to do it all over again, I'm still not starting Andy Dalton on Thursday night football, especially if you would have told me the way the first yep. half went. Honestly, the first half led to the second half because they were down and having to throw so much that he was just getting a bunch of chunk yardage plays. Uh, yep. I'll also take the miss in that same game on Eno Benjamin, even though I really don't want to because he was still ranked inside my top 25 on the week. But... 10 points he got on the final drive of the game. 10 points. He ended with 12 carries for 92 yards in the touchdown. Five targets, four receptions, and 21 yards through the air. And like I said, I believe it was like it was like 40 or 50 yards in a touchdown on the final drive of the game when they're just trying to run the clock out and, and get yeah. the victory. And those are the types of things that drive you absolutely Jake, nuts. now you know how I feel with now, those that, wide receivers that, that do that exactly crap That is exactly what happens to you. Ugh. And I love it when it happens to you more than it happens to me. Because this is an oh. that's an absolutely horrible feeling. As soon as he he broke the end zone, once he broke the goal line there, scored that touchdown, and people started to go back to the comment section on YouTube and like, I tell you, you shouldn't have died in Eno. Ben, ben, ben. I'm like, dude, did you even watch the game? Because I mean, he'd been yep. a, a non-factor. Keontae Ingram was the guy that was really scoring the points in that backfield, and then all of a yep. sudden, that's what happens. Gus Edwards. Should we all take a collective miss on Gus Edwards? Well, let's take half a miss because earlier in the week during the waiver wire show, I told everybody okay. to get him now because he could be back soon. And then I wouldn't say he was a surprise activation, but they didn't activate him until really late in the week either. So and then, yes, it was like, what are we going to expect? So we did. So I say half a sip because or a half a miss half because a miss. people at least should own him now if they're watching the videos. And here's what's crazy about it is, okay, so even once we knew he was activated, we knew he was going to get some touches. Were we expecting him to lead the backfield in touch with 16 carries? Probably not. But here's what a lot of people aren't looking at either. They see oh, they see the box score. They see the fantasy points. Oh, Gus Edwards exploded. Gus Edwards had 18 plus points this week. Okay, yes, in reality, he did. But 16 carries for 66 yards is barely four yards per carry. 
He lucked out with a goal line touchdown, and then on the first touchdown, he had the, a hole the size of, you know, Maryland itself for him to run through. So it's not like he was – he didn't look overly great. For what he was coming back from, dude looked solid, 100%. Not yeah. taking, But he didn't look like 100% yet. He really benefited from those touchdowns. And then lastly, as far as the running backs go, I mean, Chuba Hubbard and Donta Foreman are a miss for us. Uh, they had 218 total yards against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I, I mean, I'm almost at a loss for words. Like, how did... I don't know if Tampa Bay was just playing that bad or what it was, but for Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard to get 218 total yards combined, I was not expecting that. So that was a full-blown miss because I didn't want any part of that game in the backfield. Yeah. Rondell Moore, uh, I thought I thought that game on Thursday night was going to be kind of that breakout coming out performance for Rondell Moore. But unfortunately – Again, Arizona getting up so early in the game, they didn't really have to take those shots down the field like they may have if they were behind. Uh, and they just they forced as much as they possibly could to DeAndre Hopkins. I'm sure part of that was Kyler Murray just wanting to reconnect with him again. And that absolutely is fine because I told you all to start him as much as you want to say it didn't say it on the graphic. I don't care. Um, so, you know, tough, tough matchup, you know, or a tough situation there for Rondell Moore to really. But I mean, the, the, very early in the game, he had a 31 yard catch and they just never went back to him. They, they didn't have to. After the two pick sixes, yeah. they got very vanilla. I think a lot of people yeah. they didn't understand. I think what you said about DeAndre Hopkins because they I saw comments throughout the week of you mentioned that DeAndre Hopkins is not that guy anymore. But when you said that, right. you were talking about a field stretcher. He's not the yeah. guy. That's why they went and got Robbie Anderson is to stretch the field. A guy yeah. who's going to get ten catches for a hundred yards, a ten yard per catch guy. Trust me, I love D Hop. It's on my team. But he's yeah. not the field stretcher. He's going to be the chain mover. He's the possession he's receiver. He's the possession guy. Yeah, yeah. He, He's going to be that type of guy. He's not going to be the guy getting chunk yards, 40, 50, 60 yard bombs down the field consistently. Yeah. And that's what we saw in the exactly first first game back for him. Yeah, Amari Cooper still continues to be a little bit of a roller coaster. I mean, not a an awful game by no. some means or by any means compared to what we've seen from other people. Uh, but Donovan Peoples Jones starting to make a little bit more, a uh, little bit more of a uh, he's a field uh, treasure impact over the last couple of weeks. So yeah. we'll see how that continues to go, especially with the return of Deshaun Watson coming up, and then Romeo Do Dobbs. I don't know if I blame Dobbs. I feel like I blame the Packers offense. At this point, and the I mean, there's point. a couple that I, I believe I know there was one right there at the end of the game where he should have made the catch to extend it on fourth down and he dropped it or they knocked it loose, whatever. I mean, he could have had something, but the entire offense in Green Bay, I it mean, just, it's got to be right up in there with 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 Tampa Bay right now. Something in and the Bay. Juju. Good to see Juju back. I love He's seeing starting Juju to, out there. Starting to connect now. I was going to do hand motions, but I didn't know what I wanted to do there. Can, can we um, make start, the connecting like this? There we go. Starting to connect now with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I mean, more frequently. Yep. I'm okay to be, I'm okay to say that my miss on Juju is because I sat him when he had another big day, but I mean, he'll be a, a start going forward and that's what we want from him anyway. So hopefully you held on to him. Terry McLaurin ended up being a miss for me. Um, thought it might be a little bit of a tougher matchup for him, uh, but he ended up playing very well. So that was not uh, as expected as I thought it would be. Uh, and then Robert, big Bobby Tunyon, I mean, he's another one of these guys that's yeah. just up and down. It's hard to predict what he's going to do on a weekly basis. You would basis really like think that. that in an offense that's struggling right now to move the ball down the field, that big Bob Tunyon would be the guy that he may not be yeah. racking up a bunch of yardage, but be getting, you know, double-digit targets each and every week. I feel like they're just trying to be too cute with it instead of just trying to get the first downs. I think big Bob Tunyon is yeah. highly, highly underutilized right yeah. now in that offense. All right, Kyle. We've made it through the two sessions of doom and gloom. Let's have a little bit of fun now. Let's talk about yep. a few of our bigger hits from last week. First one up for me, Trevor Lawrence. He, the guy just continues to find a way to score touchdowns. And I love what I'm starting to see in the offense, partially because we're seeing a whole lot more Travis Etienne, who somebody will talk about here in a few, few minutes as well. But Trevor Lawrence, his maturation, I guess you could say here this year, is starting to be evident each and every week when he's found himself in difficult situations he's not just a turnover machine maybe like he was in years past you know last year in, in Jacksonville he's starting to really understand this offense and it's starting to be pretty fun to watch in Jacksonville they're, they're still underrated in my opinion 
Jimmy G, I had Jimmy G as like a fringe top 10, top 12 guy last week. He went out and had 303 yards passing, two touchdowns and an interception against the Chiefs and what we expected to be a little bit more of a shootout. Tua, I said to everybody, hey, as soon as Tua comes back, he goes right back into your lineup. Did he absolutely light the world on fire? No. But if you watch that game, you saw a quarterback coming off a major injury and and it didn't look like it. He was totally confident in the pocket. He's diving head first. Lowering on... his shoulder on runs. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. He's Tua. Tua, bro. Don't do not do that. Tua, slide. But... Slide, please. But if anything, that tells me that he's not thinking about it in the back of his head, that he is out there just playing instinctive football. He's confident. And he's confident. And with yep. the weapons he's got, even though every single week, and I believe you mentioned this in your show this week or was on a live show, Kyle, that every week we're going to see Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle on the injury report. It's just going to be part of it. Like they're they're going to give them a lot of rest, but when the game comes, those guys are going to be almost impossible to stop each and oh, yeah. every week. And Tua is getting the ball to them uh, in space and making great things happen. Travis Etienne, we just mentioned with Trevor Lawrence, finally he had a hundred and uh, he had fourteen carries for one hundred and fourteen yards and a uh, a touchdown. Also had a fumble going into the end zone, which really could have maybe given him two touchdowns on the day, uh, but we're starting to see a lot more Travis Etienne, and I love it because it kind of adds that big play ability in this offense since we've kind of started yeah. to see Christian Kirk tail off a little bit. And only bit. one target. That's yes. all that James Robinson got. Yeah. I mean, James Robinson, that's another guy we talked about after the games. Like, did we miss something with James Robinson? Yeah. Did he, like, have some type of major injury? Because he didn't touch the ball. It's just transitioning right now to Travis Etienne. Kenneth Walker, another guy that we've been super high on. 23 carries, 168 yards, and two touchdowns. Huge game. Had both Zeke and Pollard, both of them at starts last week. Both of them eclipsed 11 fantasy points because why? They were playing the damn Lions. Uh, (laughs) What about Kareem Hunt? A lot of people still want to start Kareem Hunt, and we have hopped off that and said, listen, you can't start Kareem Hunt right now. He has to be a sit for you. And then early on in that game. He scored a touchdown and still didn't get. Yeah, early on in that game, he scored a touchdown. And I was like, oh, dear God, I just told everybody to sit Kareem Hunt. He's going to have 30 today. Watch. Only had six total touches. But what's even crazier about that, Nick Chubb had more targets than Kareem Hunt last week as well. I mean, it's a full-blown transition where they're going, sure, we're going to see Kareem Hunt, but Nick Chubb's still the man in that backfield. And then lastly, for the running back position, I had Raheem Mostert listed as a start last week. He had a great game there, Sunday night football, 16 carries for 79 yards, added four receptions for 30 yards, and a touchdown through the air as well. He was running hard, too. Wide receiver-wise, not a ton of hits, but, I mean, again, you know, with all the injuries and with all the studs and bye weeks, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot crazy going on at wide receiver, I felt like, this week. But Chris Olave coming back on Thursday Night Football. Great uh, great performance from him coming off the concussion. Obviously, we were missing Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry. We'll see what happens with that moving forward. But good to see him rolling again. Mike Williams, even before the injury, was a start. Scored a touchdown. Looked really, really good this past week. Even with Keenan Allen being back. We'll continue to see what happens with that injury, though, and we'll update you throughout the week. Christian Kirk, I had as a low in like, risky start this week and he did end up getting you about 13 fantasy points or so so he ended up being a hit as well Titans is where I made my money though this week felt really good about some of the tight end calls Pat Fryer Muth coming off his concussion really looks to be the number one for Kenny Pickett right now uh, a really good fourth quarter to kind of put him over always late in games always yeah. Yeah, late in games, and that's fine. I'll take the points at the end of the game. That's cool for Pat. Hey, the wide receivers screw me so much at the end of games. You know, I'll take the the payback from the tight ends at the end of the games. So Pat Fryer, a good bounce back performance. Juwan Johnson uh, originally didn't talk about him too much earlier in the week, but then when the ranking show came up, and this is just a reminder why it's so important to watch both, when the ranking show came up, it was at that point that Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry had both been ruled out. So I said, hey, if you're looking for a tight end, Juwan Johnson could be a risky start for you this week, but could also bring some rewards. Scores a couple of touchdowns. Really love that call there. Taysom here. I'll t- Taysom Hill. I'll take as a hit, but I just, I, I just want to remind everybody that he's extremely risky every single week. The dude scored not even ten fantasy points. He still ended up being the tight end six because he scored a touchdown, but he only had like four receiving yards. He had like nine point six points on the week or something. That's how bad like tight that. ends as a whole are. 
Yeah. No. So, and, and when you finish as tight end six, obviously you're going to be a hit at that point as I, as if I told you to start him. but it's one of those things where you're either going to get like three points or you're going to get 30. Like it's going to continue to happen. He's a risky tight end start. I don't want to roll with that every single week. Uh, and Evan Ingram. I don't know what to do with Evan Ingram sometimes. I mean, Evan Ingram is kind of like your kryptonite to where I feel like that way about a few running backs too. like, no matter what I say, Mash, you know what? It's Matt Ryan for me this year. Because whenever I say to start Matt Ryan, he sucks. Whenever I say to sit him, he finishes top five. Damn you, Matt Ryan. Damn and you, normally, Evan Ingram. Yeah, and normally it's Mike Gusecki that does that to me. Yeah. Uh, but I went with Evan Ingram as a start this week. Uh, he's seeing plenty of targets, but he's not like right. high end. So it's like a risky start to try and run him out there every single week because you don't know what you're going to get for sure. But he's getting yep. looks right now, so... I like. I mean, I've always liked Evan Ingram. I don't know who it is. Somebody in the comments always used to give me crap about Evan Ingram about how I loved him too much. Well, Evan Ingram is bouncing back, so yeah, it is. I mean, I guess he's better than what he was in New York outside of his rookie year, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean at least we can say that. But at least there's less bye weeks this week. We have the Chiefs. We have the Chargers on bye, which are two teams that you really don't want to have on bye because there's a lot of fantasy studs there. But at least it's two and not four teams this week. Hopefully, yep. we get a little bit better understanding moving forward on some of these major injuries that we saw over the weekend. Make sure you stay tuned to the Start Sit videos, the rankings videos. And then on Friday, the doc will give you all the injury recap that we have heading in to the weekend. And we're hoping for better things here and weekend. Let's keep some of these players actually on the field scoring some fantasy points, Kyle. But those were our studs, our biggest hits, and our biggest misses for Week 7 Fantasy Football. Hopefully, you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure you do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And if you've been watching us all season and haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to do it because it's cheap and easy. It's free for you to do it, and it absolutely helps us out here on YouTube. So thank you so much for the support for myself and Kyle, though. We're going to get out of here for the day. Have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later.